So we got some DC news to jump into. It looks like Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, you know, featuring Millie Alcock, has had its release date revealed, which is great to hear. So let's dive into this article and let's find out the latest information surrounding the Supergirl movie. So this article comes to us from comicflipnews.com. So Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow, release date is revealed. So as expected, Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow will be the second DCU movie to hit theatres after James Gunn's Superman. So that's great. So basically, we're going to get in 2025, we're going to get Superman. And then the following year, we're going to get Supergirl. So we're going to have the two uh, Krypton characters, you know, at the forefront of this new DC universe, kind of having movies one after the other, which is great. And uh, I'm hoping that she, I'm hoping that Millie Alcock's Supergirl does show up in, you know, the Superman movie coming in 2025. Give us a kind of a, a bit of a hint, a bit of a kind of taste of her character, if you like, and then before it goes into her own movie. I think that'd be a great way to do the character, but I'll have to wait and see if she actually turns up in the movie or not. So the studio has announced release dates for other anticipated films. New Line's uh, Mortal Kombat 2 will arrive in theatres October 24. Cannot wait for Mortal Kombat. That first Mortal Kombat movie they did, they did it day and date release, which absolutely sucked and it hurt the box office. Obviously it released um, in theatres and it released on HBO Max at the same time which just killed the box office. But that movie was so damn fun. I really enjoyed that movie. Cannot wait for the second one. Uh, October 24th, 2025, Barbarian director Zach Kreger's second feature, Weapons, will be released in January 16th, 2026. So Craig Galipsy is set to direct Woman of Tomorrow, which will star Millie Alcock from the House of Dragon in the title role. Yeah, I mean, if the House of Dragon performance is anything to go by, Millie Alcock is absolutely incredible as an actress. What she did in House of Dragon was absolutely great. A lot of people love the casting of Millie Alcock as Supergirl. I think she's going to kill this role. And her... her um. Her fame and kind of um, fortune as an actress is going to be catapulted into the atmosphere if this movie comes out and it does really well. She's going to be absolutely incredible, I'm sure. So from Rotten Tomatoes, DC uh, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, starring Millie Alcock, will release in theatres June, uh, June 26th, 2026. So we've got just over two years to go until we get this movie in theatres. And uh, that's all good, though, because we've only got about a year or so until uh, David Corrin's Sweat Superman movie comes out first. So... We've got a nice, uh, we've got kind of Superman and then the following year, Supergirl. So we're going to get back to back years of kind of the uh, Krypton characters, which I'm all the more happy for. <laughs> it sounds great. So this version of Kara zor is described as less earnest and more edgy version of the iconic superheroine. As Gunn aims to move away from the previous depictions, particularly the long running uh, CW series starring Melissa Benoist. Say what you want about CW, Melissa Benoist as Supergirl, her run in that series was absolutely incredible. I loved the series. I watched a lot of it. I did fall off towards the end of it because I felt that the episodes were kind of repeating themselves after a while. You know, we, we have a villain of the week. It gets defeated. We go on to the next episode and it kind of repeats itself. And it, it's, it's, it's kind of just repeats itself a bit too much. But the actual show was so fun for the first few seasons. She really nailed the character. It was just fun. It was wacky, kind of like the Flash show. Um, yeah, and it was a great time, and I do recommend watching it, guys, if you haven't seen it. It's really fun to watch. So, uh, Gunn recently revealed that uh, he had Alcock in mind for the role of Supergirl since seeing her performance in HBO's Game of Thrones prequel series. Yeah, I mean, after watching that, it just goes to show how talented she is, and uh, I understand why James Gunn absolutely wanted her for this role. Are you excited about this new take on Supergirl? Show your thoughts in the comment section. So, he goes on to say, Millie was the first person I brought up to Peter for this role well over a year ago. When I had only read the comics, the filmmaker posted the threads. I was watching House of Dragon and I thought she might have the edge, grace and authenticity we need. Yeah, so she's got that edginess, but she's got that kind of grace and kind of beauty to her. So it's that kind of fine line between, you know, being edgy and hardcore, but kind of having the grace and kind of distinguished kind of features, um, you know, <laughs> she's like she's like a beautiful kind of uh timid woman but on the same on the on the uh on the other side she kind of like she'll slit your throat and chop your head off <laughs> so, i love that kind of juxtaposition in the character i mean that's really cool so um from bobba talks wow just wow millie alcock as dcu's supergirl artwork by uh jackson uh jackson adir so yeah we see this artwork here this looks absolutely incredible let's just quickly load up this page so yeah, Millie Alcock here. I mean, this rendition of the artwork here looks incredible. She's holding the sword. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Woman of Tomorrow comic book on the front on the front cover, she's holding a sword. What does Supergirl need with a sword? I'm not really sure. Unless it's imbued with some sort of magical powers to some degree and she's taking on some specific enemy. 
Uh, but then again, Wonder Woman has a sword and a shield. I mean, she's super powered. What does she need a sword and a shield for? It's just kind of a cool, iconic image that goes with a lot of superheroes holding a sword. I mean, a sword is like one of the bad, most badass weapons. Even after all this time, we've got all these modern day weapons. I mean, a sword just looks awesome. It looks so good in artwork. So I kind of understand why they add the sword to some degree. Anyway, so according to the brief synopsis, Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow will follow Kara as she travels across the galaxy to celebrate her 21st birthday with Crypto the Superdog. Along the way, she meets a young woman named uh, Ruth who winds up on a murderous quest for revenge. So it's worth noting that this is a premise of Tom King's one, uh, it's worth noting that this is the premise for Tom King's Woman of Tomorrow comic, so the movie might make a few changes. Yeah, when you're adapting the comics or a graphic novel to a big screen adaptation, Obviously, there's certain things you have to change, I mean, because they're two different mediums. So you have to sort of remove things or add things to make the uh, adaptation from a book over to the movies kind of flow a little bit better. There's always, you know, it never works one for one translation. There's always things you have to change up slightly. And um, I think a lot of people know that by now. So actress and playwright Anna Naguera is currently working on the Woman of Tomorrow script. James Gunn and Peter Safran announced the Supergirl reboot during their studio press tour uh, in January of last year when the Gods and Monsters DCU slate was revealed. The project will be uh, at least uh, particularly based on King's acclaimed book series of the same name from 2022. Yeah, it's probably the same as what Marvel do. You know, we had like Civil War and uh, Winter Soldier and, you know, movies like that that were based on popular Marvel comic books, but there was a lot that was changed. There's a lot that was kept as well. So they're kind of using it as a template, but they're going to go in and then kind of as, the, as they have the template to Woman of Tomorrow, the comic book, they're going to be changing little things here and there to kind of adapt the process better to a big screen movie. But I'm sure they're going to keep the kind of overall template and narrative kind of intact. So I've uh, been working on this for a few days and it's finally done. Millie Alcock as Supergirl, Kara Zor-El, normal, uh, normal and poster edition. I love Millie and I can't wait to see her as Kara. Yeah, and this person's done a great job here. So let's have a look at this post quickly. So we have a, uh, a kind of artist rendition of what Millie Alcock will look like here. This is really fun. I mean, this artist rendition looks great. The person who did this did a great job. And then we have the kind of poster edition with Crypto in the background. <laughs> Seeing a flying dog wearing a cape, I just can't take it seriously. Like Crypto the super dog wearing a cape. I'm just like, it is so goofy and cheesy. I just, a flying dog. It just, it just, my brain just doesn't compute with a flying dog. <laughs> But then I would sort of love to see it at the same time. Like, I can't lie. It would be fun to see, but it's just so crazy. So, uh, said Gunn at the time, in our series, we see the difference between Superman, who was sent to Earth and raised by a loving parents from the time he was an infant, versus Supergirl, who was raised on a rock, a chip off Krypton, um, and watched everyone around her die and be killed in terrible ways for the first 14 years of her life. And then she came to Earth when she was a young girl. She's much more hardcore. She's not exactly the Supergirl we're used to seeing. So it has a juxtaposition against Supergirl's upbringing and Superman. Supergirl's a lot more jaded, a lot more hardcore, a lot more edgier, whereas Superman's more of a kind of a symbol of hope, more kind of positive energy. So there's going to be that kind of difference in how they tackle crime and how they go about completing different missions and, you know, saving the day. And I'm sure they're going to kind of butt heads and have that kind of crossover and kind of argument about how they approach different things. And that dynamic and that chemistry between um, David Corrin sweat Superman and Millie Alcock Supergirl, that chemistry on screen has to work and it has to come across as good and authentic and engaging because if that chemistry doesn't work between those two characters, then I think the DCU is going to be in a bit of trouble. So yeah, guys, that's where we kind of are anyway. So we've got the re uh, the release date, which has been confirmed. Again, um, let me just double check it. So it was uh, June 26th, 2026. So like I said, we've got kind of just over two years until we're going to get this movie in theaters. But then before next year, we've got Superman coming in 2025 and then Supergirl the following year. So Superman and Supergirl in following years. I think that sounds awesome. I can't wait to see both of these movies. Like I said, the chemistry has to be on point between these two characters if they're going to interact. But other than that, Millie Alcock, fantastic casting. I don't know of anyone who hates this casting. And um, I think she's going to do a fantastic job. So guys, just over two years to go. I'm sure we can all wait, but I can't wait to see what they're going to do with this. Guys, jump into the comment section. Let me know what you think about this. Are you excited for the upcoming Supergirl movie? What do you think about the release date? A good release date? A bad release date? Or, you know, do you, do you actually like the casting? Do you think it's a good casting or bad casting? Whatever your thoughts are about this upcoming movie, let me know in the comment section below, guys. And once again, as always, I appreciate you being here. If you do enjoy my content, hit that like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.